What do you think are your team's chances in the cup? We here to win. To win the World Cup. What as we here for? <laughs> this had actually happened back in 1983. On one side was the defiant young captain Kapil Dev, who within 21 days of this press conference would become a living legend. On the other side, though, asking the question was David Frith, a world-renowned journalist, a living legend in his own right. And together, this moment was gonna culminate in an event that would become immortal in cricket folklore. Today, let's see the true story behind this picture, when a legend had to eat his own words, which somehow won him a million hearts. The year is 1978. The 41-year-old David Frith. is standing outside his office building he has worked here as an editor for a monthly magazine called the cricketer for 5 years now a tumultuous 5 years mind you from getting the type of articles he wanted to long term magazine goals he had been opposed at each and every turn the reason well in spite of being born in england he was brought up in australia and now in spite of working in england for the past 20 years in the eyes of the strictly hierarchical english society this made him a second class citizen someone below their status somebody not fit to be a leader still things were finally looking good for david the second world cup was just one year away and he had a road map for it this was to be his chance to propel his magazine to a new height this was his chance to make a name Today morning he had walked into his office with the hope of tomorrow in his eyes and a plan for the future or of which disappeared in minutes he had been fired no reasons given no explanations proffered he was just told to pack up his things and get lost and that is where he stood now outside his office building with a box in his hands carrying all his shattered hopes and dreams in it along with anger a lot of anger after all that he had done this is the way he was treated so no absolutely not they would pay he would make them pay and so with his decision made he turned his back and walked away it took one year one year of bitter hardships struggles and rejections but by the time he returned on the eve of the second world cup he had in his hands his own magazine a magazine that was to stand in direct competition to his old one called Wisden Cricket Monthly and in the first edition itself it wiped the floor with the cricketer forget about wiping it mugged it shanked it and buried it in a deep grave the reason for this runaway success was very simple david wrote articles that he himself would like to read as a cricket lover the only question that mattered was is it interesting so gone were the tedious player profiles and boring math summaries You had to give the relevant facts, but in a way designed to hold attention. In short, information designed to entertain. And the formula worked. Month after month, year after year, WCM kept on beating the cricketers' sales, slowly but surely taking over the entire market. The fired employee kept on humiliating his past bosses day after day. But even they would get their chance, maybe their final chance. The World Cup of 1983. Everybody in the publishing world knew at that time even before the battle on the pitch could start the war of the pitch had already begun WCM had taken over the market with one world cup and the cricketer wanted to take it back in the next one so battle lines were drawn and trenches were dug and the war for viewers attention was waged across the english landscape the cricketer planned on using wisdom soon formula against them but having the benefit of a wider resource pool frith knew this but rather than backing off he doubled down and so came the june edition of wcm we're talking about the world cup predictions he took shots at india now india till this point in spite of showing flashes of brilliance in test odi seemed to be treated like an abandoned stepchild just take a look at the numbers since the inception of one day years india had played a total of 93 test matches but just 40 one day years that to losing 70% of them Even worse for the World Cups. In the two previous editions, India had won a single match. Somehow, we had even managed to lose to an associate nation, Sri Lanka. That means at that time they had to actually qualify for the World Cup, and we had managed to lose to them. Hence, it was a widely held belief that the Indian board was managed by cricket purists who refused to take one day or seriously. And thus came Fritz's article. If India's pride is not important enough, 
to spur them to a wholehearted effort this time, they might as well give way to other would-be participants in 1987. India would eventually exit the tournament early, and unless India could adapt to the one-day format, they should perhaps withdraw their names from the next edition of the Steam tournament. The article ended with, he would be happy to eat his words if India progressed beyond the league stage. Now I know it would be very easy to paint David Frith as an anti-Indian guy or even a racist for that matter. But autobiographies and editorials penned over the last 40 years make one thing very clear. Frith, above all else, loved cricket. And in India, more than anything, he was deeply disappointed. For a long time, he had believed that India had the potential, the talent to shake up the world stage. And yet, time and again, disappointment. Loss, he said, was not that a big a deal. But it seemed like nobody there cared. And frankly, BCCI's attitude seemed to agree. This time, while sending the team off to the World Cup, they did not even have a farewell ceremony. Furthermore, plane tickets were mismanaged, team's vegetarian members were not taken into account. It's to the point that nobody had bothered to secure Lord's credentials for the team's manager, PR Man Singh. So, from the offset, this World Cup was seen as something that they had to just show up, get it over with and go home. BCCI thought so, Frith thought so, most of the cricketing world thought so. Except one single person, Kapil Dev. He was there to win. Because in those statistics, everybody seemed to have missed a simple fact. 26 out of 40 one day matches had been played just in the last four years. And this 26 included winning three matches in Australia, defeating England in a series, destroying Sri Lanka at home, and finally, just before this World Cup, defeating West Indies in an ODI in their own house. This 66 to 100 dogs had been stacking up bodies under everybody's radar. And with almost prophetic declaration of Kapil, this World Cup was to be nothing short of a miracle. On that fateful evening of June 25, with Kapil lifting the World Cup, Frith was present in the press box, watching India take over the Lords. This was the tightest slap he could have received. He had been humiliated at the world stage. He had become a laughing stock for the whole cricket fraternity. Just like before, he could have lashed back or vowed vengeance or done a thousand things to explain himself. But what he actually did was clapped his hardest as India won. And then accompanying the Indian team back to the hotel, joined the Indian captain to perform a celebratory bhangra right there in the hotel's foyer. If you feel that the Indian players held any grudge against him, then by the time the night was done, his Lord's program had the sign of each and every member of the Indian team. Each and every one more than happy to oblige the editor. India had won. David had been defeated. And yet, both the parties had spent the night celebrating. Well, at least for David, that celebration wasn't to last long. Because soon, his office was inundated by letters from Indian fans. One of which was from a person called as Man Singh. Now, there are conflicting reports here. One source says that he was the Indian team's manager, Man Singh while the letter itself shows that it was delivered from New Jersey, USA. But whoever he was went ham on David. Writing, I am enclosing a cutting from my copy of WCM, the remarks that have so inflamed me. I will allow him to lace it with chocolate and wash it down with ale and stout. After all, even I, as India's strongest supporter, could not imagine that they would win it. So, be a good sport and swallow the lousy paragraph you wrote. Now do understand here, David was the chief editor and founder of the most successful magazine in cricket at the time. He could have easily ignored all those letters. Nobody could actually force him to do anything, could they? After all, as Man Singh himself has said, nobody expected India to win. But David, not only did he make good on his words, but come the September issue of WCM, published the letter along with a photo of him sitting in the press room of the Lords, actually eating the newspaper article. Below the pic was the caption, which in short meant, India made me eat my words. And as if this punishment wasn't enough, he even went on to publish the same thing in a local newspaper. David Frith, by his own hands, had completed his humiliation by staying true to his words and in the process, winning a thousand hearts one of whom belonged to that Man Singh himself, who on watching that pic along with his letter quickly wrote back, 
calling David a gentleman and a sportsman, stating that he genuinely did not expect his letter to be published and even apologizing for the tone and some of the words that he had used. The letter ended with Mansing inviting David to join him for a drink if he ever visited New York. A story that had started with a scathing rebuke had ended with an open invitation for a drink. A literary enemy becoming a respected peer. And that is where I would like to end this story, by just observing a simple fact. The letter that was deriding and humiliating an editor had been published front and center by that editor. But the follow-up letter praising and lauding the editor, it never saw the light of the day. If a man is to be known by his actions, how would then be David Frith be known? Thank you for watching this video. My family was facing a lot of medical difficulties, but thankfully everybody is okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.